Hey guys, uh, it is, I think, time for a three month update on my hair uh, boot camp. Today is the, I think it's the 8th of June, and I started around um, mid March, so close enough. The official date that I have marked on my calendar from when I did my self trim was the 11th of March, so it's getting there. So, without further ado, um, I have a little list here of everything that I have been doing to help my hair grow over the last three months. So I will go through th through those first, and then we will have an official progress check. Okay. All right. Um, number one, my washing schedule. While I was up at school, I was washing my hair, um, I think every three to four days. So roughly like twice a week, one of which would be on the weekend um, when I was oiling my hair. And I actually kind of got into the habit of washing, of shampooing my hair uh, with actual shampoo. I tried to find a sulfate free one um, before I would oil my hair just to help make sure I didn't have any um, build up. And then I would try to co-wash the, the oil out. So I guess that was kind of like an extra wash, but like actually like styling my hair and then going in between washes, it was roughly three to four days. And then now that I am home, um, I am up to almost a week in between washes. I'm like, ooh, woohoo. Um, I have been washing my hair like around Sunday or Monday, washing and styling my hair, and then um, been able to go several days and then just, you know, spritz it with water um, in between. And then by the end of the week, um, I have a horseback riding lesson on Friday, and I put my hair in a hairnet up under my helmet like I would if I were competing, and I'm not going to waste a fresh wash and go on that. It's an absolute disaster for your hair if you're trying to maintain any kind of curl, so Friday is kind of... I just kind of make it last until Friday, and then usually Saturday has been the day when I'm oiling, so I'll, I will wash my hair um, Friday night. I've actually been using a clarifying shampoo, um, which unfortunately is not sulfate-free. Apparently there's no such thing as a sulfate-free clarifying shampoo, so I just try to use a little bit just to make sure that I don't have any buildup, because as it turns out, my favorite leave-in has um, been changed. The formulation has been changed, and it now contains amodimethicone. So I had to change. So it's a good thing I was washing. But anyway, um, that's kind of like my, my extra wash, I guess. And then I oil um, on Saturday. I usually keep it in until Sunday. Or if I'm really busy Sunday, sometimes it ends up <laughs> staying in until Monday um, because my hair needs plenty of time to dry. But that's roughly the schedule that I've been following. It's almost a week in between washes. So that's my washing schedule. Um, number two, as I've alluded to a couple of times already, um, I oil my hair and massage my scalp every weekend. Um, typically, as I said, on Saturday. Um, I would love to be able to massage my scalp every single day, but unfortunately I haven't found a way to do it or do so effectively without um, A, mess completely messing up my texture and basically turning this part um, around my scalp into a total rat's nest from, you know, going around and around in, in circles and whatnot. So I just do that um, once a day when I've already got oil in my hair and I just do it for like an hour, watch YouTube, catch up on an episode of Game of Thrones, something like that, to make up for the other days. Um, and as I said, I do oil the length of my hair too. I use extra virgin coconut oil, which I absolutely adore for a lot of things, not just my hair, but I use extra virgin coconut oil and I will, as I said, before usually leave that in overnight or sometimes just because I'm having like a busy day on Sunday it has turned into two nights. <laughs> sometimes that happens. So I'm oiling and massaging and I'm going as long as I can in between washes. Alright, I was using Meconazole Nitrate for a while. This is um, number three. I had I ended up getting the actual brand of Monistat. I started off with the Walmart version, um, which is okay but it has mineral oil in it. And Monistat, it's, I mean, it's more expensive, but one tube will last you ages and ages and ages. Um, and I had a little bit of it inside, like a hair dye applicator bottle diluted with some water, and I was trying to apply that on my scalp when I would remember to while I was up at school, like sometimes morning and night. Um, it can be a little messy, by the way. And then I had to move home at the end of the semester, and because that hair dye applicator bottle didn't come with like a cap for it, um, it would have been an absolute mess to move home, so I ended up um, getting rid of the contents, you know, pouring them down the sink while I was up at school, and I haven't since um, made up a new bottle. <laughs> I keep telling myself that I will, and then, you know, it's just one of those things that, you know, you, you mean to do and then you never do it. I actually have the tube sitting on my countertop, and I was going to try using it plain on my countertop, um, on my scalp, sorry, and that hasn't happened yet. I've heard you can get some headaches from doing that. I was going to try it and see how it went, but so far I haven't gotten around to it. So the McConnell's nitrate has been kind of a fail, as I said. Um, next item, this is item number one, two, three, four that I've been doing, um, biotin. This one may have turned into a bit of a fail as well. Um, I started off with the 1000 microgram uh, version, that's what the MCG stands for if you look at the bottle, 1000 microgram 
1,000 micrograms. Wow. I started off with the 1,000 microgram version, uh, and I was taking... I started off taking one, and then after a few days, I took two and then three, and just kind of gradually increased my dosage. I was taking three for a while, 3,000 micrograms a day, and then I upped it to four, and I was doing okay. And then by ba by that time, um, I was basically running out of my uh, my bottle. So when I went to Walmart, I was looking at the different bottles, and you know, I could have bought two bottles of the 1,000 microgram version for around like six dollars total and gone through it really really quickly or I saw the 5,000 microgram version which was roughly the same price but it had a lot uh, more tablets and I'd only have to take one a day so I figured you know it was an extra microgram or 1,000 micrograms a day so I went with the five 5,000 version I was just taking one a day but um, if you've never um, like read anything about biotin apparently uh, you have to drink a ton of water with it um, number one to help it absorb into your system and number two to help keep it from messing with your skin I was doing okay on the lower dosages but like when I got home um, on the, the 5000 version I just I feel like I can't drink that much water in a day and I feel like I drink a lot of water um, but you know there is such a thing as drinking too much water especially you know in a short amount of time which can kill you and, um, and since you know I'm sleeping in later I have a shorter day and I just, I just can't get that much water into my system and it was starting to mess with my skin so I stopped like two days ago and all already the breakouts have just gone down so I might go back to the 1000 microgram version and just take multiples because that was working for me the 5000 microgram version was a little too much so that's um, in a little bit of limbo right now but um, it did help my nails, by the way. Um, I did like it when I wasn't when it wasn't messing with my skin. So that was biotin. And then um, the last item is just uh, water, diet, and exercise. Um, as I mentioned before, you have to drink a lot of water when you're taking biotin. Water is just good for your body in general. Your body is like I don't know, 60 or 70 percent water, which is crazy to think about. You need it for healthy cell function. Helps flush helps flush toxins out of your body. Um, diet. Uh, while I was up at school, I had access to this wonderful salad bar. Um, in the, the food court where it had like chicken and chickpeas and you know all kinds of greens and whatnot. Um, unfortunately I don't really have that at home but I do have a big huge head of raw broccoli in the fridge that I try to munch on and I'm trying to eat fruits and uh, different things and protein when I can get it. I usually have like a scrambled egg every day. Um, protein is really good, you know, cheese, um, meat, lean meats, that kind of thing. Legumes and beans, very good for hair growth because remember your hair is made out of protein. So I'm trying to get different vitamins and minerals in me when I can. And then exercise, um, I'm fairly active. I do work out uh, a good bit. It's good for your blood flow. Uh, help, I mean, helps increase your circulation whenever your heart starts pumping really hard. Blood flow up here is really good. Um, just trying to take good care of myself and of course now that I'm home from school my stress limit my stress levels have just plummeted <laughs> I'm sure that helps too um, the end of the semester you know and that was why I didn't film for a while by the way so I do apologize anytime I have an impromptu hiatus like that just assume that it's schoolwork and other obligations because the second half of the semester you know I had a research project and a research paper and then finals came and I had one more paper to write finals week and just uh, you know, other obligations do have to come first. So, um, but as I said, I'm home now. My stress levels are much lower. I'm getting a lot more sleep. Sleep's good too. And just overall trying to take care of myself. So that's what I've been doing in a nutshell. And now we have the progress check. Now, when I did my last video, um, my hair was a little bit more combed out. I remember because I just oiled it and I think it was reaching to like the tops of my rib cage, starting to reach the tops of my rib cage like that. Um, this has a little more wave and curl in it. I just, all I have in my hair right now is a little bit of um, a Suave Naturals as a leave-in because again I washed it last night and I'm getting ready to oil it later today. Um, just a Suave Naturals as a leave-in and then I slept with it up in a bun so it has a little bit of curl left in it. All right, hopefully this is going to come up, and again, you know, excuse the inevitable bosom shot, but this is about where my hair is now. If I kind of stretch it out, it is almost to my waist, or it's to roughly um, the smallest point of my midriff, which I don't think is quite the same thing as your waist, I'm not sure. Um, it's not where you take your waist measurement, but whatever. It's close, and I know I'm sitting down, I have a little right here. But it, when I stand up, it's roughly to the smallest point of my waist. And I'm not really stretching it out a whole lot. It still has a little bit of wave up in here. Like when I was a, I was in the shower and I was washing it last night, I think it was um, to about the small of my back when I put it back. And then that, of course, was all sopping wet and very, very, you know, stretched out and straightened from all the water. But let's see. So if I don't pull it down at all, it's to right here. 
So it's about the middle of my rib cage now. And if I were to, let's see, pull it out kind of straight like I had it in my last video. Um, all right, this is roughly where the longest hair is hitting. And let's see, in my last video, I think it was about here. So we hold that up. That is, I've got a few longer hairs here. Are you gonna come out? So that is probably two inches, it's two inches at least, possibly three. And it has been um, almost three months since I started, so that's about an inch a month of growth. And by the way, the average um, rate of hair growth is I think a half an inch a month. So I think we're making pretty good progress. Uh, and I will attach a couple pictures of what my hair looked like last night. Um, it, it's reaching about to the small of my back and it did have some, some curl in it. Um, draw and styled, uh, it kind of depends on where I am in my going between washes because obviously, you know, if I freshly wash it, it's freshly curled, it's going to be a little tighter. Might be up around here starting to come around uh, my bosom. And I think last, last night, maybe before I got in the shower, I still had a little bit of curl left underneath um, after, you know, my hairnet, my riding helmet and everything. It was probably to about, about here, actually, probably about the same length where it is um, right now. So it's starting to um, come over my bust, which it wasn't doing uh, three months ago. So I think we are uh, making progress. I will try to continue with this cycle. Let's see, it's June now, June, July, August, September. Good Lord, I'll be back in school in three months. <laughs> All right, once I'm back in school, hopefully I will be able to get another uh, update done for you guys. Another three months. Actually, I don't know, maybe even before then, because as I said, my, my goal length is... Um, Roughly to about my waist to the small of my back, dry and styled. Um, I may be able to reach that by the end of the summer. I don't know. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Um, but if I do, I think what I'm going to do is once I get to the length I want, I'll probably be trimming it to like somewhere around my ribs and then grow it out again and then trim it and then grow it out again until I've gotten rid of um, all the damaged stuff. And hopefully sometime this summer I will actually be um, getting a new haircut, I hope. Um, when I originally started growing out my hair, um, you can probably see these are the last of my layers. <laughs> my hair was like mid-length and I had it layered from like roughly here-ish down and it was only about this long. And what I decided to do was just grow it out the way it was because the last time I majorly changed my haircut, um, my hair wasn't as curly as it is now. So I was just going to grow it out as is until, you know, we could see what all my hair was like, like what we had to work with, and just kind of rock the medieval look for a while, and that's kind of backfiring now. I figured, I, I thought then that I'd be okay with it, but now I just, I feel like I kind of look like the girl from the ring or something. My hair just kind of hangs around my face, and so um, this summer hopefully I will be um, finding someone who can do a dry diva style cut, and I'll see how, how that goes, and hopefully have slightly different hair. So, um, anyway, as I said, I will keep you guys updated. We may or may not follow the three-month timeline depending on um, what happens with my hair. Um, I'm expecting it to grow a lot faster now because, as I said, I have time. I have more time to devote to it. Number one and number two, I'm not uh, as stressed out and, and whatnot. So we'll see. I guess we will play it by ear, as the saying goes. So. Again, uh, thank you very, very much for stopping by and for all your support. Um, I wanted to say hello to my new subscribers. I've gotten a, a few subscribers in the last uh, several weeks. So hello and welcome to my channel, and thank you for your support. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.